everybody, it's your crazy fan girl Shyvy. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today I'm going to be reviewing The Lion King. I actually got to go and see this movie this week with my family. I had such an amazing time hanging out with them. So we went and watched this movie and to be honest, I wasn't too excited to see it because of the fact that I was really worried about it. But again, I've said this before, I went in with an open mind, especially because of how good Aladdin was. And I was like, Hmm, might as well give it a shot. And I've spoken about this many times before. I love The Lion King. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. The words memorized in my head of the whole original film. <laughs> like the, the script, the music, everything in my head. Now, in terms of The Lion King 2019, I liked it, but it just didn't have the same, I don't know, feeling that I had when I watched the original film and I know that people are going to be like of course it wouldn't it's the new version but it definitely felt very different mainly because there was a major con that failed the movie and I'm going to get into that into more detail but I definitely will say that the out of the live action remix that we have seen so far Aladdin is still my favorite to this day like Aladdin I was so worried about on so many levels but when I, I remember going in there and really enjoying myself and I've seen the movie about three times now so it's that good and it's really 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 good and however for The Lion King I mean I'm gonna say it, I had that massive wave of nostalgia when the na Savannah part came up at the beginning like everybody probably did and I I cried a lot in this film, I will say that. However, there are some major cons that let down this film and I'm gonna get straight into it. I think the major part that let down this film was the live action aspect. The fact that the animation was just so real and yes, it was visually stunning. The movie was beautiful, gorgeous. However, this animation style really let the whole movie down. The animation that was chosen for this, like, and it's understandable, they're making it as real as possible to real life, and they really did. It looked amazing. However, due to the reality that was brought to us through film, it was way too realistic to get those expressions moving the way it did in the original film, and this is the beauty of the drawing animation that we got as children from the 90s movies of Disney. With that sort of animation, there's that freedom to make the expressions really like eccentric, like really really be immersed in that sort of like way the, that the eyes like bulge in different expressions and the mouth moves and the laughter and all that stuff. However, in this film it just felt really soulless. Like there was not a lot of love, mainly because the expressions were real and because animals don't express like they do in the original film in reality. So in this one it was just it was just so dead because there was no emotion behind the characters. Like the, there was the voice, the voices, the voice acting in this movie was amazing. It was let down by the lack of expression that came with it. So example like let's let's just choose an example. For example, the part where Mufasa died, like that's the most saddest part of the film obviously. However, it lacked that expression and I think that's the difference with the original and this one like in the original you see the fear grow in Mufasa's eyes when he realizes what's going on like when Scar says like long live the king and then obviously it dawns on him that he's gonna die but in this one it was just like like um, just like um, obviously like a lack of expression die like obviously we know that's gonna happen but still like that lack of expression and emotion behind these characters hello speaking of animals hello my little boo boo Mwah. I love this baby so much you always have to come and check it out how are you my darling yeah you're tired you literally did nothing this whole time <laughs> Now I've forgotten what I was talking about. <laughs> but I will definitely say that there was a lot of great aspects to this film. However, it was largely let down by the fact that the animation was just so real for these characters and animals. Like there were these big scenes where it was like the music was uplifting. Again, the landscape was amazing. But again, massive failure because of the lack of expression that was there to really push the scene further. Another thing 
big claim that has been going around because of this film is a shot by shot remake. It was definitely close to being a shot by shot remake. I literally was, like I said, I memorized the whole original film so literally throughout this whole film I was retelling the original word for word, literally. And it was really sad that there was nothing different about it. Like, yes, there were some character changes and some, like, character motivations brought in. I loved that. John Favreau, who is an amazing producer, and he produces a lot for Marvel and, of course, directed Iron Man. Um, however, he did say that there has been major changes in this film, but to be honest, there hasn't been big changes in this film, apart from the cast and apart from... Obviously, there's these tiny moments, like the extended landscape moments, which some of them I liked, but some of them I felt were just totally unnecessary. And it was just really sad, like, they had so much content that, that they could extend upon. Like, even with the comedy, the comedy was very much the same. Like, with Aladdin, they brought in, obviously, the personality of Will Smith. I know it's an entirely different film, but with that film, they brought in Will Smith's character and, like, um, performance, like, characteristics into that film and allowed it to kind of flourish as the genie. And they brought new co comedy, like, skits into it and stuff. I really enjoyed that. However, in this, there was hardly any changes. There was only a few. There's one particular one, which was like, why? But, and I'll talk about that later. But, hardly any changes to the script, which was just really sad. Like, I know everybody loves the original, but bringing something new doesn't hurt either. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything different, which is why all of us are kind of going like, what was the point? It was a shot by shot remake. So it's a bit sad to see that that has in a way happened because I know, yes, the Lion King original is like incredible. You can never change it. Like the fact that it's a remake means that they should have been able to bring new content to a new generation of an audience. I'm just going to also say this. In certain scenes, it was really hard to differentiate the lions, especially in the final fight where obviously there was Scar versus Simba. I could not tell who was who, and even my mum was like sitting next to me and she's kind of squinting at the screen like, who's who? Blah. Like she was really confused and I felt like this is where the concept art should have like come into play a lot more for these characters and this is what I was saying like with Scar, I mean, he could have looked a lot scarier and they actually could have made him have a darker mane like Yes, they made it a little bit, like, at the edges, like, it was frayed and stuff. But at the same time, they could have made it a lot darker, like, look, make his scar look even scarier and stuff. So that was a little bit lacking, I feel, like, that appearance of scar. Like, because I will talk about Chiwetel's performance as scar, but his voice was pretty intimidating. I feel like if they brought that intimidation out more in his character of... The, that particular character model they made for Scar, that would have made it even greater. Let's just jump straight into the cast performances that we saw in this film. We're going to start off with the young Simba, who is JD McCrary. He was very talented and also sounded very similar to the original young version of Simba. I loved his performance throughout this film. It was great. And definitely it was a moving performance because we did get to see a little bit more character like kind of like fleshed out in this one. So we got to see how like Simba wanted to prove himself to Mufasa that he was brave more and that he like he wanted to make him proud as like a prince and obviously the upcoming king. But also we saw more of that rebellious side where he was like no I want to rebel and I want to prove everyone wrong so that was really great to see I really enjoyed that part especially like towards like the elephant graveyard part that was great and when he's talking to Nala great oh my god and just oh this is oh this is this one scene oh really pushed me and I mean I think everybody just sobbed um obviously when Mufasa dies he goes down further into the gorge and he goes towards Mufasa's body and and then you just see him kind of go dad and then he's normal he's like dad wake up like just normally and then it kind of dawns on him when Mufasa's not moving and his voice when it like cracks and he's like dad wake up and it's just like oh I sobbed and this is what I love about voice acting because I mean the voice is an instrument it's like singing and it's like 
like when voice actors like use it for that like kind of like for different characters and like manipulate their voices and stuff I love it so that's why when I was like listening to it I was like oh my god this is like so sad but it's so good like I love it it's yeah so good and obviously we're going to talk about the king himself James Earl Jones an amazing actor I remember when I found out that he was coming back I was in so much shock because I didn't realize that they'd ask him back. But at the same time, who else can do the voice of Mufasa? Because like it's just so like unique and that fatherly voice, it just it sounds like honey because it's just like oh it's just so beautiful and I love James L. Jones as like an actor as well. So hearing that he was coming back to be Mufasa, I was like, yes! So that was a Beautiful performance as usual like obviously unfortunately again most of the stuff that they gave him was The exact same script from the original movie like yes, there were a few different tweaks which I loved <laughs> Especially the part where they extended um Simba's like annoying like moment where he goes and wakes up Mufasa and he's like dad 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 and It's just like over and over again and then like Mufasa is just like it's just like any parent would relate to that and be like oh god and just like so like those little bonding moments between um Mufasa and Simba were just so heartwarming I loved them and this is also where the visual graphics and visual design came into play and that really was powerful moments for obviously Simba and Mufasa where like you know like Mufasa was kind of like pushing him around and stuff like those were the moments I really loved because those are like actual kind of like lions like playing around and stuff his father and son and stuff I really really enjoyed that, those moments and just like Oh, just the extended moment in a way like right after the elephant graveyard and Mufasa and Simba are talking I loved how like Mufasa kind of like pushed him into his arms just like put his arms like across from him like that and then Simba sitting just in front of him I loved that like just holding him there just keeping him safe that was just oh precious I loved that scene that was beautiful okay now on to Donald Glover as the older Simba his voice was really really good as Simba surprisingly like I kind of was like okay I can accept him as Simba like we'll see how it goes and it actually really suited like Simba really really well like that laid-back personality especially after he's gone through all that trauma and stuff it was beautiful and just like like he learns obviously a Hakuna Matata but he takes it to another level and he's like he does not care about what anybody says so in a way I liked that kind of like extended fleshed out version of Simba a bit more because we get to see like how much that actually like changes him as a character and you can see like that vulnerability in Simba especially like he expresses it where he's vulnerable but he's also shutting that part of his brain off to that trauma of obviously Mufasa dying and being told that he was the reason why he killed Mufasa when in reality it wasn't it was Scar um but I loved how we get to see that like he's immature at times and then he's like he he gets scared of even going near that topic so I loved how they kind of like express that through the voice a lot more with this one whenever like those topics were brought up either like especially when like obviously Nala kept bringing up like those events of like Mufasa dying and even stuff to do with the prior lines he kept avoiding it he was like ah nah like that's in the past blah 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 and he'll just say something else to avoid it so I loved how he kept avoiding it until he kind of had to obviously face it that was great I loved that and also especially even like with the final fight like just before Scar and Simba fight and they're on like pride rock it's just like you get to see that vulnerability in his voice and he's like yes i did it but it was an accident and he kept he's trying to explain himself and he gets like corded that was beautiful but that moment i loved because you see simba kind of like balling himself away from scar whenever he's like getting into his face and you can see he's like this in a way oh i loved that scene Okay, moving on to Beyonce as Nala. So again, I actually really enjoyed her voice as Nala. Like her voice, like me and my sister were talking about her voice. Like it's very queen-like. It's got that power in it, but it's got that gentleness. But when it needs to, it has that firmness. So I think her voice really, really suited Nala. And um, from my experience from watching the actual musical of Lion King, like, a lot of the voices that are chosen for the role, um, you can see that there's that, like, that gentleness and that, l like, loving, like, 
approach. However, there's that firmness when there needs to be. So I really enjoyed that to see that it was also brought into the film for this one. Um, and Beyonce did it really, really well. However, there wasn't much change to her character. I thought that they would put more effort into making the more moments for her like in this film. However, in reality it was very much the same as the original film. There was only a, a few extra scenes in the Pride Lands with her. So I was really disappointed that we didn't get to see more of that. I mean it may have been because of scheduling but at the same time I would have liked to have seen more scenes with Nala in it. However, I will say that I really enjoyed like that build up and momentum of the face off between Nala and Shenzi. I'm going to talk about the hyenas though a little bit later. That's another story to talk about. Um, but I will say that I did love that build up and like that angst between those two characters. That was really cool. And I loved like that fight between the both of them. That was great. Okay, moving on to Chiwetel Ejiofor as Scar. He was really good at playing Scar. However, this v Disney villain is one of my favorites and I will have to say it is because of the powerful voice of Jeremy Irons. He is an amazing actor, Jeremy Irons, and like his voice is on another level as well. So he will never be replaced in my eyes, unfortunately. Like same with um, James L. Jones as Mufasa, like no one can replace um, Jeremy Irons in my book because his voice is so unique. And I'm not saying Chiwetel is bad as Scar, like it was good. However, they took a lot of what makes Scar so enjoyable away, which was the sassiness and the sarcastic personality that he has and made him into a really, really serious character. And I'm not saying that's bad, and it obviously was a creative decision. However, it was just not there. And I think that this was also let down by the fact of the graphics, like it was soulless graphics with a really dark character and there was nothing really there, like it wasn't really working, it was way too serious because I feel like with the sarcasm that came in the original film, that was what really made it scary because you weren't sure when Scar was serious or not. So when you realized he was, it was like, oh shit, like shit's going down, like it's real. So unfortunately that was kind of lost in this particular portrayal. I really like though how they went into more detail a little bit, just a little bit with the relationship between Mufasa and Scar and like that tension at the beginning, like was great. I also liked but really wanted more of that jealousy that Scar had for Sarabi's relationship with Mufasa. Like, obviously, it's known now that, and people have always speculated, like, and said that Scar kind of had a thing for Sarabi and was hoping that he could win her over. And obviously, it was made true in this movie that he was obviously after her heart and really wanted her attention as he was the new king. However, I would have really liked to have seen that a lot more explored. Um, especially with the lack of Sarabi that we had, like I thought we would get a lot more in this film and I really thought like when they brought that topic up I was like, <gasps> okay, there might be more opportunity to see her more and see what else she could like bring up in that particular area or topic or what Scar might say. However, we just didn't get a lot from it so that was kind of a little bit like, eh. It was like a really weak payoff in a way after bringing a topic up but then it was like, it just didn't weigh up the same way, and I really thought that they'd go into more detail about it, but that's unfortunate. Like, I really, really thought that they'd go into more detail about it. But again, as a whole, Chiwetel's performance was great. And the rest that I said was mainly because those were creative decisions that were made, and I'm really sad that they didn't take more risk with this film, especially because when a lot of risks are made, a lot of it pay does pay off, and a lot of audiences do enjoy it, because it's new, it's fresh, it's... It's really exciting to see that they're doing something new and creative. Okay, now we're going on to Seth Rogen and Billy Itchner, I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, as Pumba and Timon. A surprisingly good combination because they were both quite funny. Like, surprisingly, I didn't think I'd like it, but it actually was really, really good and I really enjoyed the duo. However, again, this is the thing with the fact that it's almost a shot-by-shot -shot movie. 
I wish that there was more dialogue and content for them to have been able to work with instead of so much original content because in this particular part where there was this duo that was a comedic duo I really thought that they'd make some new dialogue and stuff for them to work with however there wasn't too much that was done only very very minor changes were made for the both of them so that was really really sad to see that that didn't really like work out so in a way like I was kind of like what and unfortunately I did this while I was watching them like I was comparing how they said it to how the original cast was saying it. um I'm really sad that they just didn't make new content especially for Pumba and Tamara because it just felt like it just yeah it just felt kind of a little bit like a ripoff like I really would have liked to see like a new script new dialogue like some of it obviously the original like the big moments staying the same but everything else I would have liked to have seen like a new fresh look to it also oh, this one scene made me and my sister look at each other in horror because we were like what is going on so what happened well obviously if you've watched it you'll see it so i was getting really excited because you know like when they get to the fight for pride rock a particular hula hula dance happens what do you want me to do dress a drag and do the hula <laughs> however it was replaced by a beauty and the beast easter egg of be our guest and i was like wait what like i remember turning and looking at my sister and being like what? Why? Like, what's- where's the hula dance? Like, of all the scenes you had to replace, it had to be the hula dance? Where's the hula dance? Like, this is like such an iconic moment that became engraved in Disney, like, like, compilations that you see everywhere. So I was just like, oh, why? Okay, we're moving on to John Carney as Rafiki. If you guys don't know this, he also was known as the previous king of Wakanda, King T'Chaka, in the Black Panther. And this was another, like, role I really enjoyed in this film. Like, I loved Rafiki in this film. However, he hardly speaks in this movie at all. Like, they took out some scenes where he actually does talk. Like, he was there in the film, but he just didn't say much. Like, there were scenes where he would talk, but in these, in this film, he hardly spoke, and I was like, why? Just why? However, there was still that great feeling from Rafiki as the, like, the mentor who, like, watches from afar. Again, the great hua scenes, like, where he was, like, fighting, oh, they were great. Like, I loved them in the original film, but in this one, it was great, because he, like, takes out the staff from the tree, and he's, like, old friend, and then he's like, hua! Like, that was great. I loved it. Also, just a quick thing. Again, with the voice, I loved the use of his accent throughout the film. Like, he did... I think he talks in Swahili in um, the Black Panther film. So he was using that, that clicking sound that they use in the accent. And at times, they used it during this film. And I was like, oh, it just... Like, that accent just, like... Like, I just, like, watch in awe as they always talk because it's just such a beautiful language and beautiful accents. So when he was doing, like, that accent during the film, I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, so the hyenas. I hope I don't butcher the names. Florence Kasumba, Keegan-Michael Key, and Eric Andre all played the hyenas, which was Shenzi, Kamari, and Azizi. And, mm-hmm, mm, I've got a lot to say about this because... The hyenas were also a disappointment because it they because if we like look at the original they were the comedic touch of the film and because they were made so serious just like Scar it lost that comedic effect especially because like it was originally Shenzi, Bonsai and Ed and the fact that they went and like renamed those two characters like as as um, Kamari and Azizi was a bit strange. I don't know why they did that, but um, it was a creative decision that was made. I could see though what they were trying to do by making there be a leader of the pack of hyenas. However, I feel like there should have been a brand new character that was made to be a leader instead of making it Shenzi. But I understand why they were going to make Shenzi the leader. However, it, I think it would have worked better if they had a different hyena playing the leader of the pack and then there being like Shenzi, Ed and Bonsai. The characterization was 
completely changed for Shenzi because the original Whoopi Goldberg obviously voiced her amazing, hilarious. And then you get to obviously this version and Florence, I'm not saying anything bad about Florence's like performance. She was so good. Like I loved her voice in this film. And she did a great job as portraying a leader of the pack of hyenas. However, I'm just gonna say it, like I really would have preferred like if they had like obviously the three original hyenas and then there being like a new leader of the pack of hyenas. I think that would have been a really good option instead of having it change so much, especially the hyenas. Like I know like kids nowadays won't understand that, but for us adults who grew up with those three hyenas who were so excited to see them, it was just a bit disappointing to see that they had been renamed and this whole characterization went differently for them. I'm also going to quickly touch upon John Oliver as Zazu. I really enjoyed his performance as Zazu, even though he brought a lot of that English accent into it. There was still a class about it that I really enjoyed because obviously like Zazu was that like, kind of like imperialistic like hmm, like very highly and proud of himself all the time. So I really enjoyed that like Britishness that he brought to it. I really liked that and like that elegance and class that was great. And also I love the reason as to why he wasn't at the stampede in the gorge instead of being slapped across the, the face by Scar. I really like the fact that, you know, like Scar actually says like, go to Pride Rock and talk to Sarabi and stuff and tell them what's going on. And this is the other thing that I was talking about, a great original moment that was taken out. The coconut song! I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts, diddly diddly, there they are, standing in a row. Literally, me and my sister were singing it on the way out of the cinema because they didn't put it in the film. That scene was so vital! They didn't do it and I was like, hmm, fine. And finally, Alfred Woodard as Sarabi. Beautiful voice. I do love the original Sarabi, like her, that actress's voice was so nice, even though there was hardly any of it in the film. I really wish that they took advantage of that in the original film. But even in this film, this voice actress wasn't even hardly used as well. They got her to obviously say a few extra lines and had a few extra scenes. I really would have liked to see more scenes with her in more depth because we just got really short sentences and a few scenes with her so I really th wanted to see like a really in-depth scene with her but we just didn't get that unfortunately. Okay now my favorite part of any film especially it being Disney was the music and oh, Hans Zimmer a musical genius like orchestrated this film in the original and obviously came back to do this film because who doesn't want to do it again? I've always been a lover of his music. He's just, he's literally like the Mozart of our generation. Like the music he's created for so many movies has just been so iconic. Like he's done it for like all my favorite films like Pirates of the Caribbean, Prince of Egypt, um, Spirit, and also, of course, one of the iconic ones, which is Batman. Oh, so good. And I really felt that the driving force of this movie that made it really enjoyable was the music itself. Like, obviously, the music was remastered for this film, and if it, I feel like if there wasn't that beautiful, like, like force of like the musical like aspect of it all this movie wouldn't have been as great as it was or emotionally moving as it was and I think and this is again I didn't talk about this before but I wanted to talk about it now obviously because we're in the music section the music is what really moved me throughout this whole film like from the musical numbers to the score like literally when the circle of life was on I was crying because it was like my childhood nostalgia, putting in like the VCH tape into the like player and and just like watching the, like the film on like a square TV. Just so many feels like I just was like oh my god this is like my childhood. I grew up with this. This is amazing. And just seeing it on an actual cinema screen because obviously I wasn't born in 1994 so I didn't get to go see it in cinema. So being able to see it on the screen at that size with the music just going like Ugh, that scared me I can't even remember what I was saying now okay let's just move on I will also say that a lot of scenes were dragged out and that meant for the music to be dragged out to meet kind of like that emotional level however I do feel like on the scale of it it did 
get dragged out too long at times and it did lose like that momentum and build up because in the original we had the expression of like obviously the um characters um change and you could see the fear in their eyes and in their a whole like face and stuff but in this hardly any unfortunately again because of the lack of like emotion in the graphics so then it was kind of like failing like slowly because it lost that momentum and it was like like slowly those emotional beats were dropping and like the um how should i say it like that urgency was getting lost starting off with the circle of life so beautiful, so much nostalgia, and just so much excitement filled. Again though, uh, the original will always be my favourite. Just, I don't know, the, the original has just this so much nostalgia for me. And I don't know that, I don't know who voiced the original one, like who sang as the main vocalist in the original Circle of Life, but that girl's vocals, dude, <laughs> just like every time I listen to it, just chills. But even in this version, so many chills, especially because of the fact that it was remastered, the instruments were more powerful and like pushing like the scenes in this movie like was so good. And uh, every time, like even with the original version, just when the sun reveals itself and it's like, till we find our place and it's like the sun reveals itself, I get chills every time so like even with this version i was getting chills and the visualization in that moment where the clouds kind of like roll back and the sunlight just hits oh that was beautiful that was one of my favorite visual moments where the sun just like hits and just like kind of like dazzles like simba in like this ray of light it was so beautiful and that was just great like i love that whole opening as usual and people were like oh my god they kept it the same like Dude, you are not changing the opening of Lion King, like, no one can touch that. Okay, just can't wait to be king. Another song I thoroughly enjoyed, like I'm gonna say it, I really enjoyed the music in this film, except for one song, I'm gonna get into detail with that. But this song was so good, like that hype was there, like the excitement it was great, I absolutely loved it. And JD McCrary and also Shahadi Wright Joseph, long name she also did the original broadway so i was so excited like when they were both going to be in it and obviously like singing their singing was so good and jd mccrary doing his riffs really really good really enjoyed it however it unfortunately was let down by the graphics in this moment because obviously in the original like there was that advantage of like changing the character movements making them a little bit crazy like almost humanistic However, in this film they had to make them run around and stuff. They couldn't carry the animals, obviously, because that would be weird. Even though it's a, like, it's not a true story, but it's still in real life. So that just let it down a lot. Like, them kind of, like, running around repetitively and just doing that. That was a little bit boring at times. I was like, uh, okay. But I kept singing the song because it was so good. Okay. <sighs> Okay, this is probably like the biggest letdown for anybody, like everybody who I've like talked to who's watched the movie has talked about this moment where it was just a massive letdown and I'm shocked that they did this because of the fact that this is one of the most famous villain songs in the Disney universe because everybody loves this song and Again, Jeremy Irons is amazing, who did, and also Jim Cummings, I have to say that he also sang parts of Be Prepared because of the fact that Jeremy Irons wasn't able to do the full recording of Be Prepared because of his, he had like trouble with his voice in the original recording. So they got Jim Cummings, who does the voice of Winnie the Pooh, to come in and do vocals for that song. So, he's an amazing voice actor. But anyway, Be Prepared, I mean, what did they do in this film? Because I was so excited, like I heard the music, like the drums like slowly building up, the instruments slowly coming in, and by the time I realised that he was singing, it was like halfway through the song and he was almost talking. And I was like, there was like a timestamp I put on it, but I can't remember, but there was like this moment where I realised that he was actually singing the song and I was like, oh shit, like, oh, it's starting. And I'm not saying like it was Chiwetel's fault, of course, like, 
Obviously, this also, again, was a creative decision to make the song like this. And I did like the change in it. Like, that was great variation in it. However, I like the original. It was just like, why? And just the fact that he only sang the last line was just like, why? What? Why didn't you not sing the whole song? Because that last line obviously shows that Chiwetel can sing. So I was like, oh, why? I'm gonna say, there was a great build up. That passion was there. I loved that. And I was like, yes, okay, now sing the song. <laughs> like, you're not singing the song. It's like, just like, it's singing, but it's not really singing. It was just not there. That last part, I got chills. And then the song ended and I was like, are you kidding me? And I'm gonna say, visual was amazing, very beautiful, but I was like, why? Also, quick note, why did they change the elephant graveyard? They seriously could have made some really cool looking, like, shots with that. I know that obviously in real life elephant graveyards don't look like that, but at the same time, do you know how much concept art you could have made with that? It would have been amazing. Oh well, that's a, another day. No, it was like such a letdown. That was one of the biggest cons I have with this movie because Be Prepared is one of my favorite songs and it was a letdown. Shame on you. <laughs> okay, so Hakuna Matata. And this is the thing, like if they had done that with the script as well, the movie would have been amazing too because it was like, it would have like been able to explore a whole different script with these two characters so not too different but like obviously make a few changes to it to make it new so that was a bit of a shame that it only kind of came out through the music also everyone probably did this in the cinema but when baby Pumba came up on the screen my whole audience is like oh it was so cute i loved it and just like he's so cute he's so tiny i just wanted to grab him and give him a hug he's so cute also donald glover's voice was so good just like that like that build up i loved it and then he was like it means no worries for the rest of your days i loved it oh it was great and i'm sorry if i keep singing it's just like this movie is my favorite and i love all the music that came from the original and in this film there's another song that I wasn't really happy with, but I'll go into these after. But oh, just that moment where he came up, obviously as the older Simba, was great. And I loved that, like, variation in his voice. It was so good. And obviously, I love the ending part where he's just doing all the different riffs. And then Timon's like, oh no, he's starting to do the riffs. Oh no. That was great. I loved that added part at the end. Another song that surprised me was Lion Sleeps Tonight where obviously it was like an acapella version of it and it's like it was so good i enjoyed it so much and i wish it was longer and i wish that they had recorded a longer version because i've been trying to find a longer version but apparently there's none that exists and i'm really sad about it because it's so good and just like that build up where obviously like pum was like kind of like trotting and then obviously the singing hit came comes in from billy and just like it was so good and so enjoyable and the, the visuals were really beautiful and I just love how like the animals all kind of like trot in time. Some of them like bob up and down like that was great. And ugh, I had it like literally after the movie finished I went home and I just I've listened to that song on repeat because it's just so good. But I just wish it was longer and I wish in the recording that the lions thing didn't come up. Also it's so funny because in the cinema like me and my mum started singing like the Lion Sleeps Tonight and like my dad was like a win boy, a win boy. It was so funny and literally all of us got scared <laughs> when Nala came out of nowhere. That was hilarious. It was so funny. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Another song. An, an iconic song that I really was so worried about and by the time it came up I was like okay I'm I'm really, really, really scared. Um, okay, so can you feel the love tonight? It just wasn't the best. Um, I was always worried about this, especially because of Beyonce's amazing voice versus Donald Glover's voice. I'm just gonna say it, Beyonce's voice overpowered Donald's way too much. And I'm just gonna say, it, the amount of riffs that she was doing was just way too much. It was like, girl, this is a duet. <laughs> You need to remember that this is a love song. It's a duet. It's not a solo. Donald's not a backup singer. 
It's a love song. You're supposed to be singing this to each other together. Especially because they made, like, obviously, like, because obviously in the original, there was, like, another singing doing, like, the, the main vocals, which was, like, the can you feel? And then the characters sang, and then it went back to main vocals. So, but with this one, it was, like, both of them were singing the whole song together. So I was, like, okay, okay, cool, okay. Um, but yeah, she really overpowered him way too much, and especially with way too many riffs, and they were good, but it was just like, no. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm gonna say, Donald's voice is very beautiful, especially for this song, it was gorgeous. I really enjoyed his voice for this, it's just that her voice is just so powerful, it's a powerhouse. And I really thought that she'd try to at least cut it back a bit, especially because this song is so serene. It's like a song that you're supposed to sing with your lover. Like, obviously as the characters, not in real life. Well, some people do it. But anyway, they're supposed to sing it together. Like, they're singing it to each other, but they're also singing it together. And it was just really, really just too overpowering from Beyonce's side of things. But I will say the visuals were stunning, like all the fireflies coming up out of the ground and the butterflies and stuff. Oh, it was gorgeous. I loved it. And the whole waterfall scene was beautiful as well. I loved that. But it was just like, it was really let down this time by the song because it was just like, no. It was like, come on, please, don't overpower the person who's the partner in the song. So it was just, yeah, that was a massive letdown. And to be honest, I'm not even going to go into detail with the solo song that came from Beyonce because I really did not like that song in the middle of one of my favourite parts of the film where Simba's going home because I really thought that the score for that particular part was going to play and I was so excited and I was like, yes, hyping it up. And then suddenly this slow song came up and I was like, Wait, what? And, oh, it was just like, no, 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 this should not be happening. And, and yeah, the song, it's got a powerful meaning, it's a good song, but I just don't like the fact that it was put in one of the most climatic parts of the movie because it's like Simba's going back to face his past. And I was just like, why? Like, I have no hate towards Beyonce. I love Beyonce. But it's like, no. I don't want, I didn't want that song in the middle of the movie. Like, I would have liked it as the credit song. Or okay, five pages finished of talking about this review. So I'm just gonna say it. To be honest, it was a, it was like an easy cash grab for Disney, this film. Um, because obviously there are so many people who love the film and obviously people are gonna go see it. And it literally almost was a scene-to-scene -scene copy of the original movie. And that's really disappointing because they really could have touched upon some really cool ideas, bring in new characters to the movie. I'm just going to be hardcore honest and give this film a 5. Um, and the only reason it's getting a 5, like I said, the music really saved the movie this time. I really thought that they would do some really cool stuff with this film. However, it was pretty much a bit of a letdown. And especially because of the fact, again, the graphics really let this film down. There was hardly any emotion behind these expressions, so many emotional scenes weren't, like, kind of making you feel anything because of the fact that there was a lack of expression. So I was really disappointed in that. But it was a beautiful film. It was a great trip down Nostalgia Road, back to my childhood. I loved that. However, it's probably a film I won't go back and watch. I'd rather watch the original film. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of The Lion King 2019. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and tell me your thoughts on the new Lion King remake that was recently released, and tell me all your thoughts on it, because I want to hear everybody's opinion of it. Like, obviously everyone will have different thoughts. Some people will enjoy it more than others. I'm sorry for the lack of content recently. I've been really busy with uni. I've been doing some really cool black and white photography with the darkroom, like old analog film. Um, photography style so that's been taking up a lot of my time because I've been in the dark room processing and like enlarging images so that's been really fun but it's also taken a lot of my time away from actually being able to make new videos and I said this ages ago but a Death Stranding video is coming I've written out all my notes and it's ready to go I just need to film it and get it out to you guys I'm sorry I haven't been able to do that hopefully it will be out next week I'm really really hoping so because I have a little bit of free time a lot more next week 
than I will have in a while. So I'm going to try and get that done. I really, really will try my best. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl out.